And cows really differ in terms of their milk production. On the low side here, with this chart just shows a cow that would peak at 15 pounds of milk per day. Now, this would be probably a herper based type cow. She's a lower milk type cow versus a cow that's high milk. She's producing at peak almost 25 pounds of milk per day. And we see how those cows' daily milk production changes as we go throughout the year. This would be a March type calving cow. So 60 days post calving is when she peaks. And then she's going to trickle off in terms of lowering her milk production as she gets into the fall. The interesting thing to me is you look out at the end here, early September, our low milk cow, she's not producing very much milk. She's only around maybe five, six pounds. Our high milk cow, look at this, she's still at 15 pounds. At the end, at the mid-September, she's producing as much milk at her lower end as our, as our low milk cow was at her high end of production. So we need to be aware of where our cow's at in terms of milk production and realize that milk production is not free. It takes nutrients. A high milk cow requires more nutrients. Here's these two same cows looking at their body condition score and how it changes. Low milk cow, we're going to say these both cows were in the mid five at the time of calving. And then going into April, they're on this good grass. They're both gaining in condition score. We get into mid June. This is where forage is at its peak in terms of quality and may be also close to its peak in terms of quality and quantity. So these are where these cows have gained condition score. Then we look at what happens. Our low belt cow, her body condition score really doesn't drop off too much. She's kind of just holding her own and doing pretty well. Our high milk cow, her body condition score is really starting to drop down as we get into August and quality of forage decreases. Look what happens. She drops almost a whole body condition score from early August to mid to late September, while our low milk production cow didn't really drop at all. So now, cows that started at the same body condition score, say about five and a half, have really dropped in terms of high milk production cow. Our low milk production cow, she's now at almost a body condition score six, where our high milk production cows drop down to a four. So, time of weaning can affect cow nutrient requirements. This is a good chart. This is uh, just showing a March calving cow again and showing our nutrient requirements. And what I want to pay attention to is what if we wean those calves early, say in late August? You can see this dotted line versus a August calving compared to a traditional maybe November type wean. I shouldn't say August calving, an August weaning compared to a November type weaning. That area where the dotted line show how, shows how we have dropped nutrient requirements, obviously dropped it drastically. And that area between the dotted line and the line right above it is the area that shows the available nutrients to that cow. Early weaning for this cow, with, again, her nutrient requirements are low. Forage available in terms of quality is in excess of her nutrient requirements. So she's actually going to gain some body condition score where if we delayed weaning till November, she's going to be losing body condition score. Again, just showing body condition score and time of weaning as a tool to manage that. So again, we're responding to what our cow's current body condition score is, where we want them to go, and changing these things that are available to us like weaning and supplementation to, to, to manipulate that. Yeah. All right, so to wrap up, cow nutrition, cow per Excuse me, cat nutrition, cow condition, and reproductive performance are all connected. And we need to remember that. And understanding these inter interactions can really improve profit in the production system. Thinking about time of calving, time of weaning, and the genetics that we have available to us, and how those things all interact, and thinking about how can we most cost effectively uh, use the forage we have available to us, and building a system around that that does that again, cost effectively is important. And you talked about systems there, Aaron, and I guess I'd like to emphasize that's one thing that we talk about a lot in the ranch practicum and spend time uh, discussing is the whole idea of these ranch systems. So uh, we've got several different interactions going on from nutrition to body condition score to reproduction to range forage quality to markets. And our decisions on one of these things is going to affect the outcomes of the other. So uh, being able to understand these interactions and to understand how, how changing one and what effect it's going to have on those other aspects of the system are pretty critical. That's exactly right. 
And if we think about, well, maybe I'm a traditional March type calving herd, and I think, you know what, I think I'd like to move to a June calving, that doesn't just involve not turning your bulls out for 60 days. There's a whole host of things that happen in terms of that's going to change that cow's nutrient requirements. It's going to change perhaps when you wean your calves, how you market your calves, the weight at which you may be able to market those calves. So we want to, again, think about things as a whole system. And I think the ranch practicum provides an environment where we get to have a lot of good discussion about that and think about the ripple effects of decisions we make. All right. 